All right, hi everybody. Today we're gonna talk about um, facing still the storms in your life. Facing the, you know, the things like a health scare or uh, a breakup or any of these intense situations, you know, in your life that people have to face and they don't know where to go. And so um, I'm doing that right now. And part of, part of me facing that, part of my coping mechanism is to help other people. So just that's, that's part of why you're getting this. So thank God that, um, that that's part of my coping mechanism, right? Look at the wind and the, and the leaves. I love, just get really present. I'm gonna teach you a few things, right? I'm a psychologist. My name is Dr. Cheryl Meyer. In my day job, I'm a psychologist. And so I just um, I have a passion for equipping other people and equipping myself with the best um, skills and knowledge that I can have. And, and so I'm looking backwards right now and I'm seeing how, and I think this is universal, that when, especially when you're listening to your intuition and you're listening to divine love, I call God divine love because sometimes when we use the word God, we just put God in a little box, right? Even if we just say the word tree instead of just look at this, you know, look at the clouds. So when you're following, when you're surrendered to divine love, and I'm not definitely not saying I did this perfectly, but when you're surrendering to divine love, it's weird, there's a cockroach right there and I never see cockroaches. It was underneath this leaf. Ugh. I, um, I don't look for everything as a sign, but I definitely think that okay so what i want to what i want to teach you is that if you if you understand that there's a creator that can see above all timelines that sees everything that you know and it's not a masochistic divine love it's a loving god is love the nature of god is lovingness right and so wouldn't you want to if we're all his children and we're all divine ones and some of us are awake to that and some of us are not awake to that but we are all divine that's why i say i welcome all people of all faiths or if you don't have a faith practice or whatever you're still created by god whether you recognize it or not you know so i was going to say to people like don't you know try to suspend your um your own personal religious prejudice if I lean on mine a bit more heavily at this time, it's, it's not a religion, but it's just like sometimes I make these videos very general so that no one is offended and no one goes away. And so that just so that you can know love and because I, I want everyone to have access to love and to knowledge and to truth and to freedom and not be chained by your addictions and not be chained by your circumstances, right? But what I was going to say is when you keep surrendering to divine love, to God, then you'll notice looking back, oh, wait, I was being prepared for this very moment. You know, for me, this is the strangest thing is that, you know, I made a class. I left my normal. I mean, I have my normal job as a psychologist, but I left part of it um, to go in the woods and make videos. I made 49 one hour videos on the power of now. <laughs> I'm like, what? Why would I do that? But I was going through a crisis at that time. You know, a, a giant breakup. A, well, one of a marriage that I was in for a long time that I didn't think was gonna end. And so I didn't know how to deal with the pain of all of this stuff that kept s surfacing. And then, you know, um, someone that I cared about had ghosted me 
and it just brought up all these abandonment wounds from childhood that I didn't even know were still down there. I didn't know. I didn't know. It's like one thing, all these things. Um, and then before that, the death of my friend Elliot. But all of those things, it's kind of like sometimes what we have is we have drywall over drywall over drywall and we have old traumas underneath. And um, when ex extreme circumstances like these you know or breakups or heartbreak or whatever breaks this open it's kind of like oh all this stuff was underneath now I want to be really careful with what I say because you can have old ideas of I'm not worth or nothing's gonna work out or everything bad happens to me like Eeyore or something right and then you can take this bad thing quote bad thing that's happening and and it's kind of like the, the way that Jesus, Jesus was always teaching about higher consciousness. Obviously, like all of the, the high teachers and true mystics, true followers of the path of divine love of God are teaching about higher consciousness. So it just is, right? But Jesus was saying when he was teaching, you know, when you clean out a house um, of a spirit, let's call it a spirit. Now, I learned that those are another word for that is thought forms so you can have old thought forms that they were taught to you when you were little when you were little like let's say you were abandoned i know someone that was like sent to boarding school and he's like five or something right when you experience that you're just worth abandoning for this greater cause of a higher education you know and he was missing his parents i know lots of people like that a couple that i'm thinking of right two two men that were boys when this happened you get this idea that you're not allowed to have close love, right? And then when you venture out and you try to have close love and then it doesn't work or something happens, it goes back and it can awaken all this old stuff. That's why I, I, I'm very careful with my clients. I don't want to I don't want to push stuff down, but I don't want to. Okay, so Jesus said, let me teach you what Jesus said. When you clean that temple out, when you take that spirit, let's say of rejection or abandonment, let's say out those thought forms, you have to fill it with something good. You have to fill it with love or else that spirit, let's just say that thought form resonates at a certain frequency. It will go find seven more to amplify that idea of rejection or everything bad's going to happen or I need attention because I'm a victim and I have all these ailments and blah, 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 blah. Like I understand that, right? And so you have to, it's important. So I teach spiritually and psychologically. It's important to learn how to fill this up. I didn't know I was gonna talk about this today. You have to fill it up with love, with, you know, um, if you look at Luke chapter, oh, forget the chapter, maybe five. It could be later, but look for, in, in the book of Luke, um, there's a paralytic, paralytic, um, a man that's paralyzed and I was looking at it today I was meditating on this morning before our doctor's appointment and um, and it said all these Pharisees and teachers of the law were there but it says these men were there uh, and it says the power of God was available for Jesus to heal. It was the weirdest sentence. It's it's interesting to sit sit with that. Just contemplate it. Not interesting, just curious. But and so these men, it said, couldn't find a way to get to Jesus. So they took this guy, this paralyzed guy that was on a mat, and lowered him down through the roof and, and laid him before Jesus. And and Jesus first said to him, Your sins are forgiven, right? And these people were like rolling their eyes, the other teachers of the law, like who, who, that's blasphemy. Who can say your sins are forgiven except for God, right? But then Jesus, and I'll skip ahead. I mean, there's lots to that story. You could contemplate on a lot of this. But the one part he said, he said, you know, so that you know the Son of Man has, has authority to forgive sins. You know, which do you think is easier for me to say your sins are forgiven and for me to raise this paralyzed man, you know? And he said to him, man you know in in one um translation they say son whatever but man i say to you rise up pick up your mat and walk no 
Yes, and go home. And he says, go home. And then it said the man returned home. And, and I looked at it. I, I don't know what the words were exactly, but it was like, go home to yourself. You know, it's like if you are made out of love, you're made out of divine love. You are a divine one made out of this like, like unimaginably powerful and beautiful and creative creator. It's like I'm so uh, in admiration to artists and musicians. And it's like this is the most this is the artist that created all artists. You know, this is the most admirable to look up to is the creator God. And you are made out of that. And so it's like there's a point in our lives where he says, God says, rise up, pick up your mat, stop laying on that mat of these old teachings, like you're worth abandoning, you're, you're worth staying lame, you know, lame in our lives, as in not knowing love, the fullness of love and receiving that. I pray all the time, let me not run from the love which you offer. It's a prayer that came from this thing called the Anima Christi, that's the Latin name, I think, for it. But um, St. Ignatius of Loyola prayed it. Oh, just on 11.11, I said that, right? I'm about to go to um, a St. Ignatius type of center for silence. But what I was saying is if you could go back, so you can see this with your own eyes, right? Go back. And you can watch my videos that I made three years ago and watch the progression of the videos. And I don't have to be just saying this and you take my word, go look at what God has been doing in my life for three years now to prepare the groundwork. Like I'm shaking right now because of just the anxiety I had to face and the energy of all of this, but how God has been preparing me so that I can be present with my family in this situation that's come up for us. <sighs> and so I practiced so much because I couldn't get out of my pain. My pain was so intense because it brought up, I felt like, you know, like this three-year-old child abandoned and, and, you know, like a boot was on my face when I got the ghosting experience on top of the, the divorce, you know, and I don't want to look at myself as a victim. But I want to say, like, you have this old wounded you and you're not meant to let the child wounded you run your life. She can't run my life. She can't. Or I will be um, disabled and, and not be able to be present for this and for my clients and for m my kids, for anything that comes up in my life, right? And so there's this there's this strength that gets built up in you if you let God do God's perfect work in you and God will do it anyway, you know, whether you follow or not. And back to that cockroach, you know, it's like that cockroach was underneath that leaf. I've never seen a cockroach over here. That was a giant cockroach. I hope you saw it, you know, and it's just like, there are things sometimes that are lurking, you know, these old wounds. And the wounds are lies. And if you want to understand the enemy of our soul is called the father of lies, you know, and you don't have to understand it like that. You can understand this conceptually, like when you hold on to a lie, it festers inside of you. It is not of love and lies still kill, kill and destroy your life. And so we're meant to, you know, know the truth experientially. You're meant to know the truth and the truth will set you free. So you're meant to rise up come back home to your real self which is made in the image and likeness of god which is love which is um healing and abundance and not lack you know the lord is my shepherd therefore i lack nothing i don't lack anything i want to do a whole video about how when you depend on other people even one ounce one iota for them to give you the love that you're you think you're missing it just puts all this pressure on the other person. So I understand what I was doing, not on, not not consciously, but what I was doing in looking for my worth in other people because I didn't know it. It was already in me because God put it in us. He equips us with everything. But if you don't know it, you keep looking externally and that does put pressure on people and it, it does make them want to run. So I'm not excusing people for running in, in an immature way and, and, and that, but... But anyway, I want you guys to know you're loved. God will prepare you for this. All my videos help you with this. 
and I wish you so much love. I'm gonna continue doing this the best I can. Much love.